No, che io sto. So welcome um, to our presentation. Um, this talk is about the result of uh, this program, Google Summer of Code, uh, last year at uh, OSGEO. I'm Margherita Di Leo, she's uh, Anne Gisla. Anne Gisla. Um, so, Anne, you want to okay. introduce So, Google Summer of Code is a program that has been launched. <laughs> okay. Okay, I will. So, Google Summer of Code is a program that has been launched by Google 12 years ago now. And it's um, aimed for student developers of um, university age to write code during the boreal summer, so the northern hemisphere summer. Um, so during around three months, um, mentored by uh, open source developers. Uh, and then, yeah, that's it. So um, the students apply in uh, around April. They get selected by uh, open source projects that participate to Summer of Code. Uh, they get paired to mentors. So each student gets at least one mentor that takes care of uh, guiding him or her in the first steps. And on the Google side of the organization, Google selects which organization take part, for example, OSGEO, Debian, KDE, or other universities, other projects who have uh, work on open source. And then the organization take care of selecting the students. I leave. So in uh, this context, uh, um, OSGEO applies as a mentoring organization. Uh, uh, what is OSGEO? Is uh, the open source uh, geospatial foundation that is uh, an umbrella organization um, uh, that groups um, most uh, geospatial um, software, open source software that you can uh, find out there. Uh, most famous maybe um, are some of them, uh, like uh, uh, Quantum GIS or um, uh, GDAL, which is beneath uh, several um, software, uh, but there are uh, many more. Uh, for example, uh, um, OSIM, for example, uh, Geonode, and so on. So, um, we are... We, or is Geo? just celebrated its 11th birthday this yes, yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> We're very proud of it. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, but of course, if you, if you want to know more about it, uh, just uh, visit our, um, our uh, website. Uh, so OSGEO has participated uh, to Google Summer of Code uh, since uh, it, uh, it began, basically, because uh, we have participated uh, this is we have applied also uh, this year, and, uh, and this is our 11th uh, year. Uh, and uh, here we present our uh, statistics about our um, participation. So this is the number uh, of students uh, per year um, and uh, the student that passed um, the program. So we did uh, quite good, I would say. <laughs> uh, so this year uh, we also plan actually uh, to um, apply uh, also to a similar uh, program uh, that is dedicated, that is uh, targeted to um, a high school student, that is a Google Code In, um, because we we saw that we um, can get such um, good participation, uh, such a good outreach to young uh, developers. Maybe it's time to address also the younger uh, generations. And so we put up uh, in place um, a broader um, uh, team of uh, uh, administrators. So uh, for this year, we are not only uh, me and uh, Anne, but uh, we are uh, seven people <laughs> taking care of uh, um, the, the administration uh, staff uh, for um, OSGEO. So uh, last year uh, we got uh, um, 22 students accepted and I, uh, we asked the student to describe uh, their own work uh, 
uh, with, in, uh, in their own uh, um, uh, words. Uh, because, of course, um, they have their own mentors. So we are not here uh, to explain in detail uh, the work that has been done because we are not uh, competent about that. Uh, we, um, um, our task is uh, the selection of the students, taking care of them, but then all the work uh, has been done by the students and by their own uh, mentors. So um, here we present um, a, a list of, of, um, of the, the projects that uh, have been developed and, uh, and the description. So we gave them a template to uh, fill. Uh, which is the description of the project. So in this case, the student participated with the uh, GDAL and um, is uh, uh, Javier Kumar Singh, uh, mentored by the Rob Emanuele Evan Ruo, and uh, he developed an, um, um, basically the support uh, to OGR for uh, some uh, geometries that were missing. Uh, so it's a uh, triangulated surface, uh, polyhedral surface, and, uh, uh, and triangle. So he added those API to the OGR geometry. Um, so we asked uh, them to provide a description um, of their, um, their idea, and then the state of the project before um, the Google Summer of Code. So in this case, um, it says that uh, according to the standard, the, the, there was no proper implementation for the, these three type of uh, geometries. And so the addition to the project provided by him uh, it's such um, uh, such modification. So here you can find also their last uh, uh, this link. Uh, you can find also their uh, last uh, report, uh, where uh, there is also a link to the uh, repository and all the uh, documentation that uh, can be useful for uh, for you to um, to go into the detail. And here uh, there is a graphical uh, um, representation of his project. Um, of course, he represents the OGR classes and he adds the three one that he, he developed. So the second student also for GDAL project is Alexander Bordzik, but uh, I'm sure I uh, don't pronounce it well. Uh, so the description, um, he added uh, the w, uh, DWG support to the GDAL and this was a long wanted uh, feature because the DWG is a proprietary uh, format so it, it was um, hard so far to deal with this kind of uh, data that uh, comes from a proprietary uh, CAD software. And, uh, but it, it's, uh, it happens very often that uh, this kind of files uh, has to be pro processed in, uh, in, uh, in uh, GIS. So he added a uh, support that is uh, totally open, finally. So the third student is, um, is for a Grass GIS software, is uh, Adam Laja. Uh, that uh, completed the basic cartography suite uh, in uh, GrassGIS uh, through the um, graphical user interface. Uh, so basically what is this is um, when you want to do hard copy maps, you need to put together the maps in a way that uh, look, uh, look good to the eye. Uh, so he developed the, the graphical user interface to, to do that. So here is um, an example. Uh, there is the legend, uh, mm, there is the, uh, the north, uh, uh, oh, sorry. Okay, so the addition to the project, he mentioned uh, these uh, commands that uh, were uh, previously only uh, via a command line, and now uh, they have a, a proper uh, graphical uh, user interface. So another project for uh, GrassGIS is uh, developed by Andrei Pezek. Um, 
that is a PyCut implementation of uh, the graphical user interface um, generated automatically uh, from uh, XML. Uh, what does it mean? Um, GraphGIS has a uh, graphical user interface based on uh, uh, WX Python, but this creates um, some problem because um, we noticed that um, it is uh, strongly platform dependent in a, in a sense that, uh, for example, a Mac user had some uh, um, specific uh, related uh, uh, platform issue. So, uh, since the PyQt are um, a little bit more, f um, more let's say, used also from uh, other software, and uh, they are doing good. Mm, the community has decided that this is a good way, uh, a, a good direction to take. So, um, in order not to, um, let's say, in order to maintain uh, the graphical user interface totally separated uh, from uh, the, the rest of the software, uh, this is generated automatically uh, through uh, XML. And it started. Um, with a, um, uh, an implementation, it's, this is really a, a big, big project, uh, but he, he started and uh, developed uh, um, a good part of it. So another uh, project uh, through, um, another project uh, for uh, Grass GIS. Ah, sorry. Okay, because we asked uh, the students to provide their uh, pictures, but they are not obliged to. So for those who didn't provide, uh, we choose a picture. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there is a troll face. Um, so this student uh, developed uh, another project for a grass GIS. Uh, it's uh, Mayaka Agraval. Um, and the title of the project is uh, Web Grass. Basically what he did, he uh, developed a um, an interface, a uh, web-based uh, graphical user interface for uh, the, the software uh, uh, GRASS. And this is very useful also, for example, when you want to give courses because um, the installation um, can be some, sometimes uh, tricky during a course. So you, you may want to skip this phase. Um, so, but it's, it's also a good uh, way, uh, for example, for collaborative um, uh, use of the of the um, of the software. And this is how uh, it looked like. So, so, go ahead. Ahead. Mm -hmm. so I will go on with the GVSIC, uh, Spanish uh, GIS software. And with one student, Carlos Colombano, who worked on a GVS uh, education uh, project that was about creating automated tests that are, for example, used in a school um, environment. And teachers can fill up um, a template in an open document format. And this generates the associated maps that could be used as quizzes. And this is already used and it's committed to the source code. We had a second project that was um, done by Silvia Franceschi, and it's about uh, hydrology in the mountain areas, and uh, especially in wooded areas. And this project is um, about the modelization of floods in presence of um, wood cover, uh, because the, the models that were uh, available before are not so exact, so the actual runs of the model could not uh, correspond to real situations. Now with this, with this uh, improved model, you have visualization of the actual stand and a better modelization of the flow. We have projects, um, students who worked on ISTSOS. Uh, that is a fairly new piece of software that is, um, this project focused uh, these and the next ones. Uh, focus on give, giving uh, interfaces um, and um, joining it with other pieces of software. So, um, Florin Daniel Cholobok worked on uh, an Android client. Uh, 
Uh, may I add something about... Uh, uh, I want to add only one word about our student uh, Florin who uh, joined uh, the admin uh, team this year. So after being a student last year, he decided to help us, um, um, let's say, reaching uh, more students. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot to mention that among the mentors, many of them, so I think around half of them, were uh, former students. So we are very happy that, uh, very happy this, that there is this turnover of people who know what it is to be a student, know what a student could need in terms of help, and they are really the right people to, to provide eye to eye level help to new students. So this is the schema of Florin work. Uh, Luca on ISTSOS work um, on web publishing of ISTSOS services, so a web API. And these are some of the visualiza visualization that is now possible with these tools, so some graphs. This is the configuration area, the map, and some of uh, more compact visualization. Felipe Proveda. Um, Work specifically on charts that I show. No, oh. I think it was a remote picture. I'm very sorry. It's it's present on our line, online presentation. I hope it doesn't happen. Um, Gabriele Fresti Filippo worked with the uh, NASA World Wind, and Gabriele was actually a um, member of the team of the previous presenter. So we're very proud that he's also uh, present here with NASA. <coughs> And um, NASA is actually not a proper OSGO member as a, as a project, but this is, I mean, this is a big discussion of what OSGO should, should do as in certify software or being open to, uh, to consider open source geospatial even uh, software that is not under OSGO hood. This is a big thing that is continuously di being discussed in uh, OSGO. But in Summer of Code, we wanted to be open to any open source geospatial project. So we had uh, every year guests project, guests in the sense of OSGEO. Uh, and we want to consider them as proper part of our group. And Gabriele made a web application that uses NASA Web uh, WorldWind framework as a base. And then uh, adds plots, three-dimensional plots on it. And it's really fancy. Uh, we had one project on Open Layers 3 from Samuel Lapointe, mentored by Jessica Lapointe, that is not a relation, they said. And she was one of our students, for example, for a couple of years. And Samuel worked on um, the Open Layers 3 Google Maps library, that is the library that allows to overlay Google and uh, not Google Maps. Um, the problem was that when this library was used, uh, the functions and the the animation that was done on the maps was not consistent with the rest of the application, so you rewrote the library, sort of, and now the refresh of the map uh, doesn't show these desynchronizations anymore. So this is, this is what he did as in the code, as in the... You see the visualization doesn't change much, but it's really much more fluid. <coughs> We had one uh, guest project, as in um, transit time, that is about public transport routes and um, routing. And Brendan Egan worked on a quick start um, setup for this application because it is, it is a very new project. So installing and running it is sort of troublesome for non-developers, and even for the developers they were, <laughs> they were telling us. And so um, he provided this quick start that uh, is also a demo, so one can also just use it to show, to, to see the functionality of this project, and or to set up his own uh, instance on your own computer. And this is what you see. So you see, for example, a, road, uh, a route for public transport with the stops, and it stops uh, as proper information. So this is another project uh, for uh, Awesome, uh, developed by Martina Di Rita. Uh, she uh, um, did with us more than one uh, year um, Google Summer of Code project, and uh, she completed uh, 
Air project of a complete photogrammetic uh, awesome tool for uh, uh, for uh, the um, gener uh, generation of, uh, of uh, DSM uh, from SAR images. Uh, I think we we should uh, go a little bit faster. <laughs> yes, yes. So, <laughs> yes. So this is uh, how it looks like. Uh, but the, in the presentation, you will find uh, all the links uh, to to find all the material related to um, all the all the project. Uh, this um, this is a PG routing. Um, PG routing uh, developed uh, two projects with two students. The first one, uh, Andrea Nardelli. Uh, developed the flow algorithms uh, for uh, PG routing, uh, that um, um, a specific uh, uh, flow um, algorithms, uh, not uh, just uh, um, routing. Um, so this is a, a graphical um, a, a representation of, of, of it. And uh, uh, this is the second for PG routing, uh, Sanke Palli uh, Reddy, um, implementation of a framework uh, which supports addition of uh, contraction techniques. Um, this project has a very nice explanation because you can um, simplify a graph. When a graph is very big, you can simplify all the segments that are linear with uh, several nodes on it. You can compact the nodes in this short notation. This doesn't influence the connection of the graph, but it makes it um, simpler and smaller in memory. So you can. This is the other um, contraction that is implemented. So when there is another linear path with more nodes, they can be condensed in only one. And this speed ups computation a lot. By the UPS, um, Jan Rudolf uh, worked on a web interface to start, stop, and pause processes that are run by PyWPS. So now um, you can actually do that. that those are the functionality that was not yet available. Akbar Gumbira worked on um, QGIS. Hmm? May I? Sure. Uh, so he developed a, a plugin uh, for uh, sharing uh, symbols and, um, and uh, style, uh, style symbols for, for maps uh, for the, the user to, um, to share this, this uh, uh, kind of, uh, um, uh, let's say, resources, yes. So here it is, um, how it looks like. Uh, finally, uh, uh, there are two uh, projects developed within uh, Zoo project. Um, one is uh, um, bringing the PyModis to the web through Zoo project. Um, so uh, this basically uh, brings the, the functionality of a tool uh, called uh, PyModis uh, that uh, process, uh, downloads and process Modis um, to uh, the, the web, basically, seamlessly. Uh, and, and the last one uh, was uh, actually um, a project not only for a zoo project, uh, but the combining uh, zoo, uh, JGRAS tools, and uh, GeoPaparazzi, that are three software. Um, and uh, this is a sort of uh, uh, binding uh, for, uh, between them. So if you received uh, <laughs> too much information, uh, you can uh, visit uh, this uh, web page uh, to find out more. I just wanted to... Uh, ah, okay. She just wanted to yes. add. We want to thank uh, our Google administrator in the front. And you can find her uh, and other Google um, Summer of Code people at the stand in building K. So you're welcome to directly ask Questions. them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.